I'm going to talk to you about the Archbishop of Canterbury, because I don't know whether you've seen his tweet today, um, but I think we've got it. Um, you might re re remember that it was Palm Sunday on Sunday, yes. last Sunday past. Um, we're coming up to... Yesterday, um, in fact. Yesterday, in fact. We're yesterday. coming up to Good Friday on yep. Friday, Easter Sunday. You know, Holy Week, as some mm. people would call it. Yeah. Mm. Do you know what he tweeted out today? As all Christians would call it, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So the Archbishop of Canterbury, Archbishop Wokeby, as I like to call him, Brilliant. today is the International Day of Remembrance of Victims of Slavery and Transatlantic Slave Trade. Right. He says, let us join together in solidarity for all modern victims of slavery and human trafficking continuing to call out unjust systems and structures. Now, what's interesting about his call against the old human trafficking is he's OK with human trafficking in the modern era because he wants everybody to be brought here on dinghies and then yeah. welcomed with open mm -hmm. arms and turned into Christians. So he's actually not against human trafficking at all, which is a bit unfortunate since it's today the day of remembrance of victims of slavery and human trafficking. Did he tweet anything Interesting yesterday on Palm Sunday, I he, he tweeted one thing about Palm Sunday, but I picked him up last week because his, his pinned tweet is not about Easter at all. Guess what it's about? Oh, God. Rwanda. Gaza. And calling for a, an immediate ceasefire on humanitarian grounds. There's no... You have to go quite a long way back to find anything about Easter at all. He's then got a picture of him uh, visiting the mosque in Canterbury, which is obviously where he's the Archbishop of. Um, but there's nothing in, of him vis visiting the cathedral in... in uh, I couldn't stop my Canterbury. eyes widening and my eyebrow raising. But you see, last year... I'm not picking on him, it's just he keeps picking on himself. No, no, you're not, you know, I think, I think they should bring himself in... up to it. Last year, last year, the Church of England said, oh, we should start doing Fish Fridays again. Oh, right, OK. You know, um, that's, there's, a, there's a Christian purpose to that. Yeah. The reason they it's wanted the to do... It's the miracle of the five... Um, fishes, is it two loaves and five fishes? Yeah, yeah but the reason, that, the reason they wanted to introduce awesome. Fish Fridays, uh, Meat Free Fridays, was for net zero. So they were taking something that's got an oh, original... Oh, well, now, you mean? This was last right. year, they, okay. they talked about it. So repurposing um, a Christian tradition for net zero. OK. But you can't do that. No. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not what the teaching is about. No. Well, this is when I... And they were talking giving up, giving up meat for Lent for, yeah. for net zero, right. but that's not why you give up no. things for Lent. You, you give up things for Lent to mirror also, Jesus if, in the desert Also, if you give days. up for Lent, that's not going to get you to net zero. Not long enough, is it? Yeah, it's only 40 mm. days. Yeah, and There's only 40 days. Do, do they worship God or do they worship net zero? Well, I it? said this last week because we also discovered that they, they, did, they invented a new sin in the Church of England. You know what it is? Racism. Racism is a new sin. And I checked okay. back with the seven deadly sins and it's still not one of them. You know, sloth, lust, greed, all of those, the original seven deadly sins. Yeah. Racism isn't one of them. Wow. So I said, basically, it's good news for the devil because he's no longer the most evil person in the world because the most evil person in the world is a racist. Racist, yeah. And, and right. the king. You see what I'm you saying? You know what? I, I think, actually, they I'm should make I'm quite sad that people can't celebrate Easter here. What's wrong with it? It's, it's who's right, not, who's right, not celebrating well. Easter? It's my favourite time of year. Well, the Archbishop of Canterbury is not think, talking about Easter. Well, He's I talking think, about you know, they, they international they slave they trade. They need to bring the current it's it's not Easter of Uganda. Today. It's Holy it's, Week. It's Holy Week. It is Holy Week. And it's... They, they need to bring the current Archbishop of Uganda and bring him and make him the Archbishop of Canterbury. Yeah. Because there's clearly a split within the Anglican Church. There's the Anglican Church here in, in the UK and everyone else. Everyone else is normal. Right. right, you actually have... People yeah, Christians in Africa well, are very well, happy to I, celebrate I, I, Christianity. I kid you not, these people are very strange to me. They're, I grew up as an Anglican and I'm like, I don't... Like, getting rid of what anti-whiteness or, or whatever. I'm like, right. where in the Bible does it say any of this? Do you want to talk about... Doesn't. Love your neighbour right. or poverty. You're talking about anti-whiteness. Mm. I, I do actually genuinely find it really sad. It I, sad. I was I was at church for Palm Sunday yesterday, and you know, the story is quite a rich, it's important a great story. story. Yeah. The donkey and everything. In, in the Christian faith, yeah. but also as part and of our culture. Did, you get, did our, you get a palm? I did. As right. also as part of our culture, there really is very little else he should be talking about yeah. in Holy Week. In this one week, which is, you know, in many ways for Christians, a bigger week than every other week. Oh, it is. Much bigger than yeah. Christmas. Yeah. You know, it's the, it's, it's the resurrection, it's the you know, crucifixion, it's the betrayal in the, you know, the Garden of Judea. See, all of that catechism school Gethsemane. work that I did. Yeah. You know, I remember all that. I'm surprised. It's a shame that, you know, this I'm surprised as well. <laughs> it is, but it is, you know, it's changed beyond all recognition. The church has gone woke, and I don't like it. But the thing is, only the church in England has gone woke, because everywhere else, I'm like... Well, I mean, no. even last year when the church... And I, I keep bringing this up, when, when the church of England here was like, OK, we're going to bless uh, same-sex unions in the church, and I'm like... But why? You wouldn't ask Muslims to do that. Right. It's, it's against the doctrine. You don't have to be an Anglican. Right. But if you are going to be an Anglican, you subscribe to certain... Like, you subscribe to the church and the teachings of the church. Yeah, no, they just change and, But the thing is, you had you had the archbishop in Kenya and, and Uganda and, and, I think, Nigeria and Ghana as well, and they were outraged. They were like, what are you doing? Yeah. You're going to destroy the church. Because right. everywhere else, we're like, 
what Bible have you been reading? Yeah, I know. It's all very weird. I know, when you talk about whey, though, something that I do find very funny is my uh, mum has to get gluten-free wafers. Oh, really? She's they Catholic. Do those now. I, I yeah, oh, gluten-free, gluten -free absolutely. Gluten -free. And, and you like, can go to certain churches ridiculous. where it's... And, and what's funny that about the, the... the body of Christ. It's the body... And you she's Catholic, so she believes it is the body no, of Christ, but she has to get no, it gluten-free. You can't have a gluten-free body of Christ. Mad. Well, so she doesn't, she doesn't literally believe in their transubstantiation. I have made exactly that argument to her. It was always gluten-free, though. It's literally like... It's like I can't take... It's unleavened bread. Well, no, it's not. It's, I mean, I, 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 I had communion last week. It's literally like cardboard and like... Yeah. It, there's no gluten in there. Yeah, it's me. not real bread anymore. Yeah, no, 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 I mean, it never was. I was, actually an, I was actually an altar boy, so I can tell you from me backstage... Too. Yeah, from backstage, I can tell you exactly what it was. And it used to come in little packets. And yeah. yeah. Very little food was involved in the making of that, I can yeah, tell you. Yeah, no, no, no. But what about if you're a vegan? You can't take the body of Christ. I've, I've right? said this for years. Huh? But when you think about it, like, if you are Catholic, you are actually eating a human. Like, that's not a... Like, you are okay, actually... Were you, were you, were you breastfed as a kid? Because I'm pretty sure breast milk isn't vegan. Uh, yeah, but but I wasn't... Well, no like, I wasn't breastfed vegan. when I'm 35. Yes, but, but Dave's a vegan who yeah, eats cheese anyway, that. so that's, that's not going to be... Bitch, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a word for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, even that show's been Beat bad. Them. Them. <laughs> let's, talk about, uh, let's talk about something slightly less <laughs> contentious, shall we? Anti-Ulez vigilantes, this is great, have now come up with an even better idea... Uh, than what they were doing before. Allegedly, they were cutting down these um, uh, these posts and, and cameras and putting, you know, bags over them and all this. They've now put bat boxes up, which means they can't be touched. Brilliant. And Isn't also, brilliant? also, you know, this helps the ecosystem and it diversity. Does. It's very good. It does. So you know, it's like just... rewilding the Wait, I didn't, London Borough. So they're covering Broadway. it with a bat box. Yeah, that's brilliant. It is brilliant because you're not allowed to move bats. And they just put it back on. You're no, not, but, but you're no, not you, allowed you to move bats. You can't touch it. You can If there's a bat living anywhere. It could be in your loft, it could be in your house. You I are did not, not know this. You know, these are like, same as water bowls, they're protected. So by the local... Hold up, so I have to live with a bat that doesn't pay me rent? Well, the bat's quite small, to be fair. Uh, it does not pay rent. No, it doesn't pay rent, no. Oh, absolutely not. I love this. This is just like a... It's such it's a very British, imaginative, It's such it? a British version of the bat signal. You know, we don't need Batman. <laughs> we've, got, no. we've got real we've got bats and biodiversity. Yeah. It's so I love creative. It. Do they have that with pigeons and not like pigeon box? No, pigeons are not protected. Pigeons are a scourge. Although, I mean, I don't think you can kill them as such. Yeah, you can't kill them. You get falconers. Is it falconers where you get, you get birds of prey and to kill the pigeons, yes, don't you, in London? you do, yeah. yeah. But, like, for example, seagulls are protected, believe it or not. They you're really not allowed, should. Yeah, you're not they allowed to do javelins. anything to seagulls. If you find there are seagulls nesting on your roof and every time you go out with the rubbish, they swoop down and break into it and put it all over the road, there's nothing you can do. You just have to, you know, suck it up because they are a protected species, unbelievably. Well, we once saw a, a bird that was, like, not long for this earth and we no. called up the RSPB because, like, it wasn't in they a good way. Interested. They didn't care. No. I was but like, this is a really what, distressed you know animal. They're like, nah, mate. No, you know why? Because they're too busy making sure that they've got enough diversity and wokery going on inside oh, the RSPB. No. They're not actually, actually saving any birds or doing their job. I was shocked. You can't just have anyone saving a bird. You have to have a black transgender Muslim. Can you just be get with the programme? Oh, yeah, well. exactly right. So, so, so I think this is going to be good because, of course, the whole ULEZ situation... I mean, we talked earlier about Oxford is now the latest council to say that they want to charge people more money to park a car that's powered by diesel, and they've come up with this great idea that SUVs are like more likely to be um, damaging the roads. Well, this is where the green people have finally come unstuck because the heaviest vehicles on the roads are... Electric vehicles. Or tractors so, now. Or tractors, <laughs> yeah. tractors, Tractors, I think, are exempt, actually, in the same way that tanks Seriously? are. Seriously? Yeah, because Mr Pothole, a man who's on this show on a regular basis, goes around the country finding potholes, he got, got himself a tank. It's like a sort of Second World War tank, and he drove it into London because tanks are exempt from the congestion charge. Wow. So, you know... <laughs> but I, I think we should be encouraging you know things like this. Do you know what happened to it? He got it halfway towards uh, West, Westminster Parliament Square and it got stuck in a pothole. <laughs> and the pothole was so big that he couldn't get out of it. I love that. It's poetic like, justice. Poetic justice, yeah. Absolutely right. That's brilliant. So you learn things on this show um, that you don't learn on other shows. That's Finally, brilliant. former Tory male voters are switching to reform mm. in droves. Mm. The Tory party are, are, are stuffed, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, there was a YouGov poll uh, this week that's put the Tories at the lowest yet, 19%. Yeah. Yes. Wow. And reform, I think, are at 15%. Yes. So only just behind. But but male voters are more likely to vote for reform than yeah. Tory now. Um, Brexiteers, pensioners, red wall voters mm. are particularly more likely to switch from Tory to reform. Yeah. 
Um, it really looks like game over. It does. Always. And well, I, I think I think people were trying to be quite circumspect about Lee Anderson's defection, but I think that was really unhelpful. Mm. And of course, if Nigel Farage is to throw his hat yeah. back in the ring, it'll be a real game changer for reform. Parties, oh, I think so. Well, I think I the mean, thing I, is, I don't think it's unlike it's, it's, it's inconceivable, shall we mm. say, that the Tory party's just finished. Dead well, yeah, that's not inconceivable. But on the reform point, we need to see them actually winning seats. That's that's when people will start to wake up and take this seriously as not just like an anti-Tory protest party, but a party that actually has some skin in the game. Mm. Um, I, I do think the polls will narrow closer to the election. But I, like I, like you, I want to see the Tories obliterated because I, I don't think they deserve this two-party system that we have, where these 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 parties feel entitled to the British vote, and so they can come in government, come into government, and do whatever the hell they like. I don't think that's acceptable anymore. And I no. do think the Tories have lost the trust of the public, and, still and they talking. deserve to be obliterated. And they're still talking as if you know, they know what's going on. Well, yeah, they, they clearly they're don't, They're completely do they? adrift from the country. I mean, it's, again, in the belief. comedy circuit, do you bother even making fun of the Tories anymore? I mean, it's a bit of an easy laugh, isn't it? It's interesting, like, how, like, politics isn't really talked about that much because there's, there's only so much satire yeah. you can do. Like, right. Bojo was very good for it because right. he could satire on the satire, but I think, I think a lot of people kind of almost feel sorry for uh, Rishi Sunak because yeah. it's like, it's too easy now. Like, it's kicking a puppy while he's down. Yeah. Can you imagine what the, the mood would be mm. like in those meetings? It must like, be horrendous. What could he do to make it worse? I genuinely yeah. do think that. Well, he has to wake up every morning and try and show this kind of, you know, happy face yeah, yeah. to the public. And it can't be easy, can it? I mean, I don't feel sorry for him, but, you know... Yeah. He does, he, he does wake up enormously rich every morning and, and I'm sure he's got some wonderful Money job in some wonderful job uh, in Santa Monica happiness. to go to afterwards. <laughs> but I have to say I don't agree I don't agree that reform is just a protest vote. I think these I male, don't think so either, I think these I think male think voters who are think. switching genuinely want to see some reform um, MPs. Not not to say no, that that will do. happen, but I don't think this is a protest. I think they will. I think people are absolutely desperate for genuine change. Mm. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I want to see them eat in that case into the, eat into the Labour vote as well. Yeah. Because you had uh, yeah. there was a piece in the Metro talking about you know the to the, the the reform could be dangerous for the Tory Party. Mm. What about the Labour Party? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it doesn't look like a lot of their base are happy. I mean, Owen Jones <laughs> leaving the Labour Party, I think, is a ringing endorsement of yeah. Keir Starmer. Actually, I don't think it's to show that the Labour Party is in shambles. <laughs> Um, that being said, though, there are many disgruntled Labour voters that I think would like oh, to reform as well. But the Labour Party is just as, you know, divided as the Tory yeah. party are, so it's all a bit of a mess. I think voter turnout's going to be mad. Yeah. I think it's going to be low. like three men and a dog. Very low. Like, it's just going to be... <laughs> yeah. And, and, and everyone's going to be... And the dog will be voting for reform. <laughs> yeah. You know. I don't know. I might actually vote this year for the first time. Did you in, a, in a little while. Yeah. No, I've always voted, but I've spoiled my ballot. Right, yeah, the yeah, last yeah. couple Bought of elections. Yeah. No, most definitely deliberately. I've, I've drawn some choice cartoons on my ballot <laughs> paper. Like what? Yes, I remember, yes. Genitalia appeared once. Okay. Time, so Laura! Men yeah. don't have... Dot, dot, dot. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna t I think I might actually tick a, uh, cross a box this year. Mm, uh, great. Or next year. Well, yeah, we shall we'll see. see. We'll see.